Hello and welcome to another SmartSafe ADAS calibration video. Today we have a 2023 Mazda Miata. This is the uh, RF version and the Grand Touring trim with a six-speed manual. Fun car. We'll go, we're going to go ahead and calibrate the front camera here used for the lane departure warning. And we'll be using our iSmartLink 801 display tablet along with our ADAS mobile uh, calibration frame. So let's go ahead and get started. As with all ADAS calibration, it all starts here with the tablet and we need to establish communication between the vehicle and the tablet. This is done via the VCI, which is conveniently located here in the tablet. And we'll go ahead and get this plugged into the vehicle's OBD2 port. With the VCI plugged into the vehicle's OBD2 port, we'll go ahead and key the ignition on. We'll go ahead and put it on to ignition two. Then we'll go ahead and click on the ADAS calibration button. And we got communication between the vehicle and the tablet. And when, before we start any calibration, we always want to make sure that we've gone through our prerequisite checklist. So we want to make sure that our steering is you know, set straight to the zero. And we want to make sure we don't have any passengers or any extra weight in the vehicle. We want to have at least a full tank of gas, three quarter to a full tank of gas and that all of our tire pressures are set to the manufacturer's specification. You'll be prompted for this on the tablet. But first, we'll be, we're being asked here to go ahead and switch the ignition on, so we do have that on already. So we'll hit OK. Tablet's doing some more talking with the vehicle, if you will. And we get a little bit of report here indicating uh, which vehicle we're working with. So I've got my VIN, the vehicle model, the capacities, and whatnot. So we'll hit OK. Alright, so we'll go ahead and always start with an ADAS system scan. So we'll click on ADAS system scan, press on start scanning. Now this vehicle is equipped both with the forward sensing camera as well as the blind spot detection uh, in the rear. So we'll go ahead and we want to generate a pre-repair report. Now this vehicle of course doesn't have any um, uh, DTCs currently, but we're just doing a demonstration here. So we'll move forward and pretend as if it did. So we'll generate a report, and again, this is called the pre-repair report. This is important to always uh, have done so that you're baselining the vehicle uh, prior to you performing any sort of work or calibration. So here I can go ahead and put in additional information if I'd like. Um, I can even add picture uh, using the built-in camera on the tablet here. So I can do a take photo and take a picture, of, for example, of the dash here showing which indicators are lit. So we'll go ahead and attach that. We'll go ahead and hit OK. And this generates our pre-repair report. So we'll hit Save. And then we'll go ahead and hit the back arrow and go ahead and start into the calibration function. So we'll click on ADAS calibration function. We're going to be performing it on the Lane Departure Watch front camera. So we'll select that giving us some alerts here. Now on this particular vehicle, we also have a choice of doing a dynamic or static calibration. Uh, for this particular video though, we're focused on the static calibration. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then we're prompted to uh, uh, set which calibration platform or frame we're using. So in this demo, we're gonna be using our ADAS mobile. So I will select that. And here we're being prompted for that uh, prerequisite step that I mentioned earlier. Uh, for example, why are you performing this function? Are you, are you doing a ECU replacement, a camera replacement, or maybe the windshield was replaced? So here we're just gonna go ahead and say yes. Again, these are the prereqs saying the steering wheel should be set at the angle of zero. Tire pressures are all set to OEM specs, headlights turned off, so we'll check that. Uh, the ignition switch obviously is on. And, we'll, and of course, if you're doing the camera, you want to make sure that the area of the glass where the camera resides is clean. So we've done all those checks, so we'll go ahead and hit yes. And here we're going to go ahead and start to define the center line of the vehicle. So we'll be using a plumb bob and finding uh, two points uh, on the vehicle, front and rear, or point A and B, to again define our virtual center line which will help us to get the calibration frame lined up. So let's go ahead and get started on those procedures, uh, which will be done starting at the front of the vehicle. 
So we're here at the front of the vehicle to define point A. Uh, now normally on the illustration here, you'll see that the five line laser is placed at the front of the vehicle. However, because this particular car, the Miata, has got a very low front end and a kind of a deep chin spoiler here, we kind of have to reverse the procedure around a little bit. So we'll be putting our uh, laser reflector at the front of the vehicle instead of normally where it would go in the rear. So we start with taking a plumb bob, find the center point of the vehicle here, uh, this is pretty easy to do with Mazda because you've got the uh, center point right on the emblem there. So we'll go ahead and let that hang here. And then we'll take our cross marker. I'm going to hold this. I have to hold this here because this vehicle has an aluminum hood. So it's either aluminum or fiberglass. So the plumb bob does not stick with the magnet here. All right. So we'll go ahead and get our first point or point A positioned. Looks good there. So we'll go ahead now and move to the rear of the vehicle to uh, find our point B. So now we're here at the rear of the vehicle. We're going to go ahead and plot our point B. So I've got our plumb bob here and I can look at two points for this particular vehicle. I've got the, again, the emblem center and then I also have the rear camera here. So we'll go ahead and let that, let the plumb bob drop there. I'll go ahead and set our marker. Okay, and once I've got the center point marked, I'm gonna go ahead and take our five line laser. And we'll turn this on by rotating the black knob here. It gives us our laser. I'm gonna position this right over our cross marker. There's a little LED, I'm sorry, there's a little laser at the bottom. We'll get that lined up. Next, we'll take our auxiliary mirror here and we'll point the laser towards the front of the vehicle. We can fine tune it with the white adjustment knobs. And once we get that into place, we'll be shining the laser onto the, front, uh, onto the laser reflector, which is at the front of the vehicle or our point A. So we'll go ahead and move back to the front of the vehicle now. Back here at the front of the vehicle, we're gonna go ahead and now determine our point C. So we have our laser line, uh, giving us our center line that is, and we'll go ahead and measure a length of 1600 millimeters between our point A to our point C. So I'm gonna take our tape measure here. And I pretty much kind of have this pre-marked here for this demo, but we'll go ahead and show you here. I'm looking for the laser that's coming from underneath the, or uh, coming from the five line laser at the back of the vehicle. We'll line that up to, and I've got it right here. So we'll line that up to 1600 and find the center line, which is located right here. So that's where we will be positioning our calibration frame. So we'll move on to our next step. So our next step is to go ahead and place and position our calibration frame. So the first thing we'll do is we'll have our uh, cross laser um, turned on here. We'll go ahead and line that up to our point C that we defined earlier. And for now, we're just going to line it up just as close as possible, of course, but we're gonna still fine tune it. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that our um, our stand is level with the ground. So I'm gonna be looking here at our, our spirit levels and those look okay actually where they're at. So we'll go ahead and um, lock our wheels down. And then we have a fine tune knob on the back here. I can go ahead and dial that in. So for example, if you look at the laser on the vehicle there, you can see that we're off a little center from there. So we'll move it over to the right and there. So now our calibration frame is centered and ready to go. We'll move on to our next step here. And that's to set the uh, distance for the targets. So they need to be set at 500 millimeters from center. So we have that here. These are adjustable and we can set that to 500. And we'll do that for the same on the right side, which this one's already there at 500. And then our next step is to go ahead and 
place the height of the frame at 1400 millimeters. So we have a, a rangefinder laser here. We'll go ahead and fire that up. Currently we're at 1144 and we need to be at 1400. So we'll bring this up. Okay, and just a little bit off here. Bring it down to 1400. And there, we're at 1400 millimeters. So our next thing to do, before I place the targets on, I wanna make sure again that we're all lined up because sometimes when we're cranking the stand up, we might bump it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure that we're still aligned. I'm gonna set our frame back just a little bit because I noticed that it moved forward a hair. So we'll bring that back to our center. We'll lock our wheels down again. and readjust. All right, so it looks like our frame is all aligned. Our next step is to go ahead and place, let me get that height dialed in there. Okay, and we'll go ahead and place our targets. So we have to have a target on the left and right side. These are the LAM01-16L, L for left or driver side and the LAM 0116R or for right or passenger side. So let me go ahead and place those on right now. So I've got my left one on. And here you can see you can't make a mistake because we have our labeling right here on the rear. So we'll go ahead and get the right side put on here. All right, so once we have this all set up, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the center laser off and we're ready to calibrate. There's one additional step that needs to be performed. We need to go ahead and take a measurement between our front wheel hub center to where the target is positioned. So I'll go ahead and place the L bracket stand here. I'm gonna take our tape measure and we'll measure this. back to our target here. So this is where our laser shows the, um, the distance from front wheel center hub to the target stand. So we're at about 2370, and that's what we'll input into our tablet. So we'll go ahead and head back to our tablet. So as I hit calibration, it's asking me to input that distance. So I'll go ahead and place it in there. And by the way, that was in millimeters. So we'll go ahead and enter 2370, which is just over uh, seven feet. And then we'll go ahead and click on next step. It's asking me to confirm that the ignition is still switched on, which it is. So we'll go ahead and hit okay. And we have a successful calibration. So we'll go ahead and hit okay again. We'll go ahead and switch the ignition off as it says. And we'll hit okay. And it says, would you like to confirm the ADAS report? So we'll say okay to this. We're gonna go ahead and add another picture to show that we actually performed the calibration. So we can shoot that with the calibration frame in the background. So we can add that to our post repair report. So we'll hit okay. This gives us our diagnostics report showing the success of the calibration. We'll hit save. We'll go ahead and go out and we'll always run a post scan so that we show that we have no uh, DTCs present. So I'll hit start scanning again. And we've got no code, so we'll go ahead and generate our post repair report. So I'll change our report type here from pre repair to post repair. We can add in our original pre repair as well as our diagnostic scan. And that will give us a complete post repair report. I'll hit OK. And there we go. We've got our vehicle information. There was our pre repair, our photo that we took earlier. 
post repair showing that all of our uh, systems are okay, no DTCs. Here's our diagnostics area where we show that we've performed the static calibration successfully. And of course, an added photo at the end there. So we'll hit save. And we can go ahead and share this report at this point, whether we print it out or send it via email. So this completes the forward camera calibration here on this 2023 Mazda Miata RF. We hope that you found the video helpful and we look forward to seeing you at the next one. Bye for now.